So the evil king of Balak hires the powerful prophet Bilaam to curse the Jewish people. Bilaam isn't just a prophet, he's also a very talented sorcerer. Kind of like, he who must not be named. In fact, some people say that J.R.R. Tolkien modeled one of his characters in Lord of the Rings after Bilaam. The character of... Saruman. In any event, Bilaam gets his altars ready, he's all set to curse the Jewish people, and each time God changes his curse into a blessing. Now think about that for a second. Is there any chance that that blessing took effect? If I point a gun to your head and I tell you, bless me or I'll blow your head off, and while trembling under gunpoint, you give me a blessing, you say, uh, okay, you should be uh, healthy and uh, wealthy uh, and wise. Is there any chance that God in heaven is going to say, wow, what a beautiful blessing. I'm going to make that one come true. Of course not. That's ridiculous. And yet under gunpoint, you still have a little bit of free will. You can call my bluff. Maybe I'm not Dirty Harry. Maybe I don't have the guts to pull the trigger. Maybe the gun is empty. Maybe it's filled with blanks. But in Bilaam's case, he had no free will. God took over his power of speech and turned the curses into blessings. So how could those blessings possibly have any utility? And if they don't have any, then why didn't God just muzzle Bilaam instead? So that each time he tried the curse, it would sound like, mm, 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 like his mouth was welded or taped shut. Why change the curses into blessings and record them in the Torah? So I saw one commentator offer a fascinating answer to this question as follows. He says that the blessings definitely didn't have any effect. There was no benefit to the Jewish people from those coerced blessings. So why are they in the Torah? So that when we read the Torah, or when we study the Torah, and we have the right intentions, that activates those blessings, carries them up to heaven, and that's when they start taking effect. Now, if that's true, think about it. It turns our studying of this week's Torah portion or reading this week's Torah portion in the synagogue from a spectator sport into the NBA Finals. We're on the court. We're the players. We're the ones dishing off assists that lead to buckets in heaven. What an incredible opportunity on behalf of the Jewish people. Thank you.